What is going on, my fellow Omi homies? It's Foster, and I'm back at it again with another Vivi Andy Comey video. Guys, today I wanted to explore a topic that's been discussed a little bit in the community recently that I think maybe hasn't gotten as much attention and traction as it probably deserves. And it's in relation to the information that David Yu has provided over the course of the most recent AMA and the Twitter spaces that he participated in, in relation to what the actual VV app will look like in the coming years. We know right now it is collector centric and is based on digital collectibles, but David Yu has come out a few times now and said that will not be the primary focus of the company moving forward. And that got me thinking, because I've seen several videos from other content creators, uh, specifically Cavell Anderson, who has explored a lot of concepts of v gamification in relation to the VV app when the VV verse comes out. And I wondered what other major gaming platforms are doing right now what are the numbers that they're bringing in based on their user base and how could we translate this to possible adoption of the vv app with the vv verse and what could we see in relation to some of the revenue numbers that we may be bringing in as well as what would it do to the omi token burn so i just want to get out of the way right now and and show for those of you who you know recently have experienced some issues with the app, I know there's some people that have been getting locked out, uh, and it's been extremely difficult to get collectibles on drops recently, and I know there's a lot of frustration associated with that. So I just wanted to show you guys this. So this is uh, a website that shows all of the highest grossing apps. So... VV is classified as a entertainment app. So if we look at the top app ranking here on the website, we can actually see that in the United States currently, VV Collectibles is number eight out of the highest grossing apps. There are a lot of apps here that a lot of people have probably heard of that are below VV. Amazon Prime is a perfect example, Paramount, we're only just behind Netflix and we're talking big, big apps like TikTok, Disney, HBO, and Hulu. And guys, this isn't specific to iPhone on the Apple store. We could look at, for an example, I live in Canada. If we look at Canada, we can see that VV is number four currently. If you feel that Apple may have some form of advantage, we can switch over to Google. We can see that it's number three in Canada. We'll switch back to the United States and you will see that it is number four. So guys, I mean, we're consistently in the top five right now of all top grossing entertainment apps on both Android and iOS, and no one has heard of this app. Like, that's incredible. So that led me to think, well, what about applications and games that we have heard of, what numbers are they pulling in and how can we equate them to what VV is doing right now and extrapolate that and understand what could happen in the future. So I think the first example uh, that a lot of people have probably heard of is Grand Theft Auto. So Grand Theft Auto has a metaverse in a sense. Uh, you load into the game and you can interact with other players. You have a character, which is essentially your avatar and you can complete tasks and missions. You can do scavenger hunts. Now, by no means am I saying that the VV verse is going to be Grand Theft Auto. Like this takes years and years and years to create, but at the same time, it is a metaverse that you can purchase items on in the game and the company makes revenue from them. And that's the trend that we're gonna be focusing on and you'll understand why as we go through them. So as a perfect example, Grand Theft Auto earned about a billion dollars in 2020. Obviously we're going off of 2020 numbers because 2021 hasn't finished yet, so we don't have those numbers available to us, but it is conceivable that those numbers, given the increase in gaming that has taken, not just due to the pandemic, but just the way that people live their lives digitally, it's possible that these numbers would be even higher this year. But in 2020, they made a billion dollars. Call of Duty Mobile. Not even Call of Duty the game, because we wanna throw in mobile examples, because as we know, VV is a mobile first platform. 500 million downloads and over a billion dollars in revenue in 2020. 500 million downloads. We're not even at a million downloads yet on the VV app. And Call of Duty had 500 million downloads on the phone and a billion dollars in revenue on a game that is free to download. Pokemon Go hits $1 billion in 2020 as lifetime revenue surpasses $4 billion. Each year they made about a billion dollars for the four years that Pokemon Go has been out. That's absolutely incredible. Once again, a free game to download 
on your device. Fairly simple UI and interface. You don't own anything on it, but they made a billion dollars last year from users. And Fortnite. Fortnite has both a mobile platform, which has recently been removed from the App Store, but when it was available on the App Store, was grossing $1.1 billion in 2020. And the actual desktop application to play Fortnite, $5.1 billion. These games, minus GTA, are all free to download and play. There is no upfront cost to start any of these games, and you could play them without spending money and still enjoy the game. There's no paywall. Yes, it helps to spend money, but you do not have to spend any money to participate in any of these games. And they have all grossed over a billion dollars in 2020. Why is this happening? That's the first question that we need to ask ourselves. And the most obvious answer is in-game spending and things like battle passes. So as a perfect example, I've pulled up Call of Duty. Fortnite has one as well. Pokemon Go has one. And then GTA has a ton of in-app purchases. You can buy a monthly subscription to Call of Duty and you get access to a battle pass. What the battle pass allows you to do is it unlocks... XP boosts, which basically gives you more points. It unlocks skins for characters, skins for vehicles, skins for weapons, but it gives you no competitive advantage. All it does is give you cosmetics. Same thing with the Fortnite Battle Pass. Same thing with Rocket League, which is a game that I play as well. GTA, like I said, has functionalities for unlocking different cars and characters, although there is more of a paywall in GTA. You can get some pretty awesome things there that does make you extremely overpowered. But in general, what we're seeing is, you know, a low upfront cost to users to participate in something that they enjoy that is free and accessible to them. And these companies are making billions of dollars a year from people making these microtransactions. Sometimes it's hard to stomach buying an $80 or $90 game up front, but if you only have to pay $13 a month to get access to a battle pass, which gives you a ton of cool accessories and different applications, it, it's pretty cool and a lot of people can find a way to budget that amount. So why is this important and why am I talking about it in relation to VV? Let's run the numbers, guys. So we know that all of these companies have one thing in common. They've all made a billion dollars in revenue. We know that the last time that we heard numbers presented from Vivi and Ecomi in relation to revenue that they have generated this year, it was somewhere in the ballpark of 60 to $80 million. Now remember, they are a brand new application that no one has ever heard about. They have less than a million downloads, which is a hundredth, if not a thousandth of some of these other major brands. And they're making a tenth of what these companies made in their first year of release. That's absolutely incredible. So what I've done and as you can see on the screen, is I have created a pretty straightforward and basic calculation tool that we can use to surmise and, and make educated guesses based on what we could see happen with revenue based on user base in VV and the equation that it would have related to the OMI burn, depending on the price of the OMI token. Now, of course, there's a ton of variables to this. I'm by no means saying that this number will equate to this number and 100% unequivocally we will burn this number, but they're important factors to consider. And I think a lot when we hear people say, hey, there's too many OMI tokens, we need to reduce the circulating supply quicker. I think I will be able to illustrate for you just by running a few numbers with what I would classify as fairly conservative estimates, you will see that we could run out of the OMI token far quicker than we ever thought previously possible. And on top of that, it does not include several other of the avenues that I've explored in previous videos that cover different forms of OMI utility that will reduce the circulating supply. So what I've done is I've said, okay, I mean, we know this year we're not going to make a billion dollars with VV, but let's say conceivably just based on the, you know, crazy growth that they've had this year, that with the continued drops that they have going into next year and with the release of the VV verse that we can make a billion dollars in 2022. Now, I know some of you may say, well, that's far too high. There's no way that they can do that. But like I said, remember that for, you know, six of the first eight months, they were doing a drop once every two weeks and 
the user base will increase, which means the amount of drops will increase and the purchasing on the secondary market will increase as well. So I think that this number could be kind of ballpark where we could be looking at for 2022. So let's say Ecomi makes a billion dollars. We have no idea what the only price is going to be at. I know people are saying, hey, you know, we could hit two to five cents by the end of this year and who knows what we see next year. Right now, we're not even at a penny. We're at, you know, six and a bit tenths of a penny. So I've just said, hey, let's pretend we're at a penny right now because it's an average, right? We'll take a little bit under and a little bit over. We'll find the median in between. We'll call it a penny for now. So if they made a billion dollars in revenue and it was the only token was one cent, that would be a hundred billion OMI that could be used towards burning. So if 100% of all of that revenue was driven towards the OMI token at the price of one penny, it could conceivably burn 100 billion OMI. Now, of course, we know that it's never going to be 100% because Akomi has operating costs and they have responsibilities to licensors, to keep the lights on, to pay their employees. So we're never going to see 100% of every transaction burning Omi. It's, it's not realistic. So what is realistic? Well, we know that based on secondary market sales right now, the base level that is burned is 2.5%. I'm not saying that a billion dollars of that entire revenue is going to be generated from secondary market sales. We know that there'll be primary market sales, which a percentage goes towards buybacks, which in effect is also a burn mechanism. But I don't want to make this too complicated for those of you that may not understand the full tokenomics. So base level burn, we'll call it 2.5%. So if on a billion dollars of revenue, we ended up burning approximately 2.5% of all of those tokens in value, we would burn 2.5 billion tokens. Now I know what you guys are saying. Wow, I really expected that number to be bigger. 2.5% isn't that much when you consider the fact that, you know, we have 217 billion tokens in circulation, you reduced it by 1% in a year. That's melodramatic. And, and you're right, that's not that exciting. But what we also need to remember is secondary market sales are just going to be one facet of the total burns that take place. And this is the, this is the entire premise that I wanted to make this video, is that what do Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Pokemon Go and Fortnite all have in common. The vast majority of the items that they sell on their application are either their own IP or non-specific IP that they do not have to then go out and pay licensing rights for. Now, Fortnite obviously is, is the obvious exception because they do do a lot of partnerships with you know different movie characters and, and things like that. But for the most part, the vast majority of the revenue that these companies are generating is based off of their own intellectual property. So if Vivi, and it has been discussed about making their own avatars, their own land, their own non-specific items, shelving, light bulbs, flooring, picture frames, kitchens, think Sims, you could just make your own house. All of that would be VV specific IP or non-branded IP, which would allow them to burn a far greater percentage of that. We also know with the introduction of Marvel and MGM Entertainment that the burn rate really isn't 2.5% moving forward. It's something more like 8.5% because we know that there's a 6% licensor fee in the secondary market sales and that licensor fee is also being converted into OMI and burnt from the circulating supply. So it's not 2.5 billion, it's 8.5 billion, which sounds a little bit better. Now we're starting to make a little bit more chunk. We're talking, you know, 3% of the circulating supply in a year, which still if we stayed linear in growth, would take 30 years to burn. So that's not that exciting. And granted, I, I agree with you, but there's more levels to it. Because like I said, the non-specific IP and the IP that VV controls directly that they own and is patented to them could see a burn of 100%. Now, don't look at this number. It's not 100 billion. That's based on a billion dollars in revenue. But below, as you can see here, I've outlined land non-specific IP, we're talking the bookshelves, the flooring, the light bulbs, things of that nature. And then we have the Master Collector Pro. We've heard about all of these things recently, but we haven't seen any of the numbers actually be run on them. So let's ask ourselves, what is a reasonable price for land to be sold at in the VVverse? Well, the most expensive collectible that's been sold on the VV app so far is $400. That was the Captain America and the Spider-Man. I would say 
that it makes absolutely no sense to sell land for $100, $200, $300. I personally don't even think it should be sold for $500. I think it should be sold for more. But I think that $500 in my mind is a reasonable price to sell land. I've done a previous video on Decentraland and saw what that land was selling for. And like the base level of what it's selling for in the secondary market is like $5,000. So I think charging $500 for land, and I think $5,000 is conservative for what land will go for in the VVverse. Because if they make this a completely interoperable, next level metaverse experience that people are hoping that it will eventually become, that is pennies compared to what, you know, rich people or businesses and institutions would be willing to pay to get their hands on the land because it's going to be a finite supply. It's not going to be available to everyone similar to the collectibles. So if we said $500 in land, let's say they released 100,000 plots of land over the next year. We know we have about a million downloads and they're aiming for three to five million by the end of next year. That's either 10% of people that get to own land or conceivably as small as 2% of people that get to own land. That would burn $50 million dollars from the OMI circulating supply, but that's $50 million directly. So that's 100% of that. So that, when we are able to see a five, 100% uh, burn rate, that is when we start to see the OMI really burn. Remember, this number used to say a billion, which was 20X what we had originally, but it burnt less OMI than what 100% burn rate on $50 million in revenue would do. Guys, people are sleeping on the concept of a 100% burn for non-specific IP. And I've heard some people say, and it frustrates me to no end, and I can be honest with you guys, because you know that I always try and be as transparent as possible. I don't understand why people are saying that Akomi is selfish and that they don't want to do buybacks and that they're hoarding money for themselves when... They've already come out and publicly said that they will be burning 100% of a lot of the non-specific IP and land that is burnt in the BV burst. That's $50 million in revenue that could be going to their pockets that they're then giving back in effect to the community by increasing all of the OMI token holders' value of their tokens by burning those tokens. So we could see 5 billion tokens burnt just from 100,000 plots of land sold at $500. I personally think this number is low and I think this number is low. I don't want to get crazy, but let's say hypothetically it's sold at $1,000 and they sold 2,000 plots of land then what we would see is uh, a much higher um, version of, of what this goes to. So it, it's it's an interesting consideration and um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's a very interesting consideration. And so I I just think it's it's something that we need to, to keep in mind when we're looking at these numbers. So with that being said, that's just one aspect of things. So we now see the non-specific IP. Like I said, we've, we've calculated land. Non-specific IP is, is, like I said, the floors, the walls, the, you know, whatever you can modify in your house. And I think a lot more people will spend money on that than will on land. Because once again, the price point makes it more accessible in order to do so. So even if you say, you know, and remember, this is 5000 500,000 pieces of, of, of items that are purchased, not 500,000 people. You know, if one item costs you $20 and someone like Ray Fixie wants to come in and customize the you know what out of his house, he could end up spending $10,000 alone just on his house. And that's how we can equate these numbers. So once again, that's $10 million in revenue that is burnt 100% from the circulating supply. So now we see instead of $50 million, we have $60 million. We've now burnt another billion OMI. Master Collector Pro. These are not necessarily, land is not a recurring cost. Non-specific IP could be a recurring cost because you'll always access to it. Master Collector Pro is something that will likely be a monthly based subscription service like Dan Carruthers has said. What is a reasonable amount of money to spend to get access to a plethora of, a, of a, you know, different items that you can get? Now remember, none of these in normal games, give you any competitive advantage. We've talked about Fortnite, we've talked about Call of Duty, we've talked about Pokemon Go, GTA it does, but it's a little bit different. We already know that with the Master Collector Pro, you will get specific advantages for having it, including additional XP boosts and bonuses for ranking up in levels, which in regular video games doesn't matter because it's just your individual progress. But in the Master Collector Pro, if you're able to earn more points for holding collectibles than the next guy that does not have this pass, you are in effect 
going to become higher than them with the same amount, or you could pass them even though they're holding a, a higher amount than you just based on the additional um, percentages and XP that you have. So what we see in a lot of these battle passes is it's around 12 to $20 per month. I just said 15, um, you know, in us, it might be cheaper. It might be more for me because I live in Canada. A lot of these things are 20% more. So I just called it $15 and I said 800,000 people would buy this pass. We have about a million downloads right now. I know what you guys might be saying. You might be sitting there going, why would I ever spend $15 on this? It makes absolutely no sense to me for the cost of a Marvel mighty or at least what it was when it was released, you could, in effect, gain value relative to hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of collectibles. Because instead of having to own all of those collectibles, you can participate in this pass and earn bonus XP and rewards that offsets not being able to afford some of these higher priced items. So I think that a lot of people will go for this. And that's another $12 million in revenue. And remember, when we talk about Fortnite numbers for a second, right? Fortnite users, 350 million in 2021. And on top of that, you know, if they're making $5 billion. So we're running these numbers based off of, you know, a billion dollars, which is 20% of what Fortnite was making. And they have 350 million users. We have less than a million. If I ran those numbers for you, we wouldn't have circulating supply left. If we had 350 million users buying this pass, even if we said that only 10% of people were going to buy this pass, we would burn $525 million per month. So $525 million per month, we would burn 52 billion OMI a month just based off the Master Collector Pro. This is obviously based on, like I said, 350 million users with Fortnite. Do I think that this is reasonable right now or anytime in the near future? Probably not, but it just, it's the perspective guys, right? Like we're in it right now, so it's hard to see how this thing is going to take on a life of its own, but this is going to grow exponentially. Even if we said by the end of next year, we have three to five million users and you know, over half of them wanted, like if we have 5 million users and over half of them understand the benefit of paying for MCP Pro and it burns OMI, that's still $52 million a month, which times by 12 is $600 million in a year. So we could burn 60 billion OMI from the circulating supply if the token stays around one penny. Now, that's obviously a big factor that people need to consider. If Omi goes up to five cents, which, you know, everyone's excited. Hey, I want to see Omi go to the moon, whatever the case may be. That's fine. But understand that as the price of Omi goes up, the relative burn that is available to us by money spent goes down. So even with $600 million in revenue being all burnt at 100% through MCP Pro uh, over 12 months, not including landing on specific IP, if we're up at five cents, we only burn 12 billion Omi instead of 60 billion Omi, which is what we would burn when we were at a penny. So... These are considerations that need to be taken in. And of course, these are numbers that we can't run in their entirety and be 100% confident on until we see the full program, see how likely it is for people to want to partake in it. But I think it's very exciting. I think when you start to look at the numbers and understand, once again, this 100% burn rate doesn't apply to all of their revenue, but it does apply to all of these. That doesn't include the 2.5% fee of every item that is sold in the secondary market. That doesn't include Omi being used for NFT directly and that portion being taken directly out of the circulating supply rather than from the reserve wallet. That doesn't include Omi staking, which will be a huge factor in reducing the circulating supply, which will then in turn compound the effect that all of these have. It's hard to keep up with guys. It's absolutely crazy to run some of these numbers. And I sit here putting these videos together for you guys. And I really try and toe the line of not being too bullish. I try and be realistic, but I also try and show you that it's not unrealistic to expect that some of these things could happen. We looked at GTA. We looked at Call of Duty. We looked at Pokemon. We looked at Fortnite. All of these numbers are published data that are factual. 
Alfred Kahn has come out publicly and said that he doesn't even want to be the Netflix of NFTs. He wants to be the Walmart of NFTs. They want to have amusement parks. They want you to be able to get off rides and purchase items. They want you to be able to attend concerts. They want you to be able to do what all of these games do combined and more. Is it going to happen overnight? No, it's not. But we don't need to rush to raise the price of the value of the OMI token because as some of these items come out and we start to be able to factor them in, the burn is going to happen and it is going to happen a lot quicker than a lot of people think. Now, once again, if we go up to a dollar, we're not burning any OMI. I wouldn't complain because obviously if our market cap increases and we still manage to get to a dollar without being able to burn OMI, great. But just think about it as a perspective, right guys? Like, yes, we want us to go to the moon now, but maybe we hold off a little bit. We let the rocket fuel load up a little bit more and we let the OMI burn do its thing with the price that we're at right now. And of course, OMI and Ekomi still reserve the right to do double XP burn events and things of that nature to remove tokens if they feel as though this model is not working as effectively as it needs to in order to remove tokens from circulation. I just don't see a route in which we fail at this point. There are way too many catalysts moving forward. I've discussed it in previous videos. I've discussed it today. If you guys don't see it, that's fine. Everyone has their opinion. If you do see it, I'm glad. I'm, I'm considered an honor to be a part of this with you. As always, guys, thank you so much for the support. I know my videos tend to be a little bit longer than other content creators and you have to sit through them a little bit, but I really want to try and provide you with as much information and context behind how I get to the numbers that I get to. If I just give you a price prediction and I give absolutely no context or information behind it, I don't think it serves you a benefit. It's great to hear Omi's gonna go to a dollar and yes, I believe it will one day as well, but without the understanding behind why it's going to happen, it doesn't do anyone any good. Finally, thank you so much for the support that you guys have given me on my channel recently. Uh, I've just absolutely ballooned in subscribers. I think I'm up like over 500 in the last two or three weeks. It's an absolute honor to have been able to be as successful as I am in such a short period of time on YouTube. And I have each and every one of you to thank who watches my videos. If you enjoy the content that I have been releasing, please make sure to like comment on the videos. I do get back to every single person that does comment and subscribe so that you don't miss any more content that I will be releasing. There's so much coming out in the near future that I will be touching on and making videos on. And I really appreciate the support guys. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, it means the world. I love you guys. Take care. Peace.